Hello, hello. Welcome back, guys. Hope you had a nice weekend. Now, NEO is a company for which I have talked about um, a few months ago. And if you remember back then, if you actually watched that video, you remember that uh, NEO was getting interesting to me uh, below the $10 mark. And so right now we are sitting at $9 and you can kind of see that the stock has been going down quite significantly in the past few months. You can kind of see it here. You'll see the six month chart going down and down and down. And so this starts to become very, very interesting. And it was even uh, a little bit lower um, a, few, a few months ago or so, a few days ago, frankly. Now, the stock uh, has been battered and the company is a company that has been having some high growth. Now, we will look at the financials and kind of examine it in a little bit more detail. But before we do that, I kind of wanted to take a little bit of a look at our stock news module here because it tells us, uh, it quickly tells us a little bit of a story about the company, what is going on right now. And so it's wondering why investors threw Neo stock into reverse today, for example. So let's examine that a little bit. So as you'll see here, why investors threw Neo stock into reverse today, a new consumer survey on the elect electric vehicle maker unearthed a troubling potential trend. Despite that, uh, despite this, the analysts uh, disseminating the polls results remain bullish on this segment. So what happened here? Investors were concerned for top EV names after a big bank published uh, a research report highlighting uh, recently reduced growth numbers. And so Neo was actually down uh, about 3% at that date. And uh, that's a UBS analyst that um, delved into the findings of the 7th Annual Evidence Lab uh, Consumer Survey. And this year's version found that 46% of uh, survey responder, uh, respondents are likely to consider buying an EV, which is 3% percentage points below the 2022 study. And so despite the apparently declining demand, he expects EVs to continue making uh, inroads, uh, grabbing 26% worldwide, worldwide market share and uh, so forth which is interesting. We are looking at, at a little bit of a potential decline here in the overall market, EV market, and this is why we're uh, looking at NEO also going down. Now, you will see here in regards to NEO, NEO stock swings lower after reporting losses that were much, much wider than expected. That's uh, the most recent earnings report that the company had about a month ago. So that's interesting to, to note as well. And Zipeng also uh, reported, uh, reported lower, pretty much and reversed lower. Now, what about the, the company and what about the financials? Because um, uh, as the company is going down, you will see here that this one year high has been 24. And if you take it a little bit further, like the five years, you will see at some point it was like 60 and, and, and more actually. And so it has dropped uh, from a cliff. Uh, and the thing is, uh, as it's going lower, you know, at some point it kind of potentially makes sense to be buying a company that has trouble. Uh, just because, you know, a company has been trading lower, it doesn't mean that it's a bad company. And also, if a company is losing money and has the potential to kind of reverse swiftly and maybe a good uh, potential buy today, it's, it also potentially makes some sales to maybe take a little bit of a risk. Now, we're going to examine that in a little bit more detail to see exactly what is going on with the company. But you will see that the company overall has been losing money and it's basically a, a negative P and a negative price to free cash flow for the most part has been losing money. And obviously this is a huge concern. But again, you know, if we're at the point where the company could potentially reverse uh, abruptly and um, maybe, you know, may actually allow us for some good gains in the future, in the near future that is, it may be an interesting op opportunity. And this is why we're going to examine our discounted cash flow model, of course, which will, which will tell us the story. It's very interesting and very important. Now, the revenue growth, and this is a great thing about this company, has been growing tremendously. And this is one of the core reasons why it's a company that to like, frankly. And uh, their cars are pretty nice and they are selling. And so this is uh, very, very important. But... These kinds of companies are very, very cash hungry. They try to, you know, grow abruptly, grow, grow fast, and they spend a ton. And so right now the company has been losing money pretty much. The thing that I don't like to see, of course, but it's understandable again, a cash hungry company is the fact that they are issuing more and more shares. Now, obviously, as the stock price is going down, this probably won't continue happening at the same pace. When it was like $60, it made a ton of sense to issue tons of shares. And this is exactly what the company was doing pretty much through these years, uh, has been issuing tons of stock. And um, the company has obviously quite a few liabilities here, while they are not really making cash flow this way. You're looking at a negative uh, high and a negative number here. And um, the 
free cash flow of the company has been a little bit better than the previous years, but still in negative territory, just less negative than what it used to be. And the equity of the company has been growing not because they are making profit, but because they are actually issuing shares pretty much. That's what's happening here. Now, what about... Um, what about the company's uh, financial statements in a little bit more detail, because this is important. Now, recently I added the 10 years of the two, so it actually shows more data if it exists. Now, if you are looking at other companies like Meta, for example, you will see 10, 10 years. This is a much recent, much uh, newer company, so not too many years to display. But you will see here in the last uh, five years uh, for uh, NEO over here, for which we have uh, all the data, you will see that um, revenue has been growing at a tremendous pace. From 700 million to 7 billion, that's tenfold increase. So that's an insane amount of uh, increase over here in terms of their revenue, which is great. I mean, they're selling a ton. Now, as the revenue increases, uh, you are looking at a declining net income, though. So kind of to be expected, again, for a company of this sort, at least for a while. But eventually, you, want to, you definitely want to see some uh, profitability. This is obviously very, very important for every company. And while it's understandable that they could have uh, um, some years where you know, profitability is in the negative, as long as they are selling well and they have a good plan for um, becoming profitable soon, and also the stock price allows to potentially buy a company of that sort, which is risky, at, um, at a cheap price, then it may make sense. Now, the balance sheet of the company, you will see here that um, we're looking at a total equity of uh, 3.5 uh, almost billion dollars, mainly, you know, pretty much financed by the additional operating capital, which is basically the money that the company gets from selling stock. That's what it is. And this is why the company's equity has been growing instead of going down. And their debt also go, uh, is growing. Not too much, though, frankly. Okay. In terms of the cash flow statement, uh, you will see that the operating cash flow was actually positive here after the adjustments in uh, the latest, latest fiscal year. And in terms of uh, the, the free cash flow, we're looking at a slightly negative number here after obviously the capital expenditures are accounted for over here. We're looking at a slightly negative number. Most years has been negative. So we're looking at a company that is up, kind of approaching profitability, but it's not really there yet. But they are selling well. So, you know, there are, there are some things to consider here. Now, the next thing that we want to do, and it's obviously super important, it's critical, frankly, is take a look at our stock evaluator tool for which all our patrons have access to. And, uh, you know, if you're interested, there's a link in the description box below this video, of course. And uh, what we want to do is actually try to evaluate what the company will be doing in the next few years, potentially, and whether these uh, doings that the company will potentially be achieving in the next five years make sense for us, for us to buy today. And so the revenue growth that the company has been achieving has been tremendous and they could continue at this pace. Now, we do know, we, based on the article that I read earlier, that things could go a little bit south, like uh, we could have a little bit of a decline in terms of the revenue growth. And also it will eventually happen as you are growing. It's not the same growth that you can get from 700 million uh, to 7 billion than, that, than you can get from 7 billion to 70 billion. It's much, much harder to grow from 7 billion to 70 billion than starting from this point and growing to seven. And um, for this reason, I'm still going to use uh, relatively high numbers. So I'm going to go, let's just go 15, which is very high, of course, 20 and 30 here for our revenue growth. I think the company has a good chance of potentially achieving 20% in the next five years, at least on aggregate. And uh, for the net income margin, this is a problematic, ob obviously, because the company has been having negative margins because it's losing money, of course, as uh, we examined earlier in the financials. Yet, we need to presume, assume some profitability here for our investment to make sense. And so, typically, um, car companies have low margins. So, in this case, we will go with something that is low and um, you know, near zero, pretty much. So, this is going to be one, I'm going to try for one, uh, three, and five for our net income over here. Oops, I forgot to type one. And uh, the free cash flow margin that I'm going to be using is something that is rather typical for many companies. This is 80% of their net income margin. That means 80, 90, and 100. So for instance, 100, 100, million, uh, 100 here in the free cash flow margin would basically mean 5% if you actually correlate it to the revenue. So 5% of free cash flow margin correlated to the revenue. We're just using 80, 90, and 100 because we want to derive this from actual profitability. This is why we're doing this and we're using these numbers. So annual return, 13% is what I want to be making every year is the typical one that I ask for. And I hit calculate. 
And we're going to be getting some interesting results, as you can understand. Obviously, the margins critical, super critical, because they are about profitability. And so as we're closer to zero, we're having much lower prices. And uh, of course, this... So as the company is achieving uh, better results and they are achieving, are achieving better profitability, it, you know, its price would make, it would make sense to be higher than, um, you know, than the low uh, projection, for example. And so as we are getting to 3%, we're at $3.5 uh, for the current stock price. That makes sense to buy right now. And as we're getting to 5% for net income margin, which could easily happen if the company actually reaches uh, profitability, then we're sitting at a green uh, number here, $9.5, so almost $10 uh, is where we are at. But again, remember that this has to be coupled with a 30% revenue, grow revenue growth pretty much and 100% free cash flow margin, basically 5% on the revenue. So all that said, what we're seeing here in regards to NEO is that uh, obviously we have a risky company. We have a company that has some risk, but there is some potential interesting rewards here for poten maybe you know, getting some, uh, some part of this company, getting a few, a few stocks here, a few shares. And so I kind of start to like NEO. Obviously, I'd like to get it at a little bit of a cheaper price. I think it's still slightly expensive, but it's getting there. And uh, below 10 bucks, it starts to get interesting in, in, my, in my eyes. And actually currently sitting at nine. So I would say that even, if, uh, even at this current price, it could potentially make sense for some people who are interested um, to, you know, to get this company and uh, you know, hold it for a few years. I think this could potentially rise well in the future, do well in the future. But um, obviously, if it gets to like six or seven bucks, then it becomes an even better uh, case. But that said, again, as it is right now, and based on what we have been seeing and the fact that the company has been growing, if you are willing to take a little bit of a risk, it may, it may not be a, a terrible idea, actually, to, uh, to add this company to portfolio and again, wait for the, for, the, for the next few years. I think that is a potentially interesting opportunity. That's what I wanted to talk about in regards to NEO. I think it's an interesting company. I'm, I, poten I could potentially think about it, uh, about adding it to my portfolio as well at some point. Maybe I want to wait a little bit just, uh, just to get a potentially better price because uh, I think it's possible as well. Like the current uh, economic uh, climate could potentially allow for even cheaper prices here for NEO, for instance. But thanks for watching. Do tell me what you think about NEO and potentially even, even other EV makers, especially Chinese ones. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks again. Bye-bye.